Hey all here OS Reviews, today we are taking a retro throwback look at the iPod Classic 4th generation model. This was released in 2004, making it over 15 years old, so it's crazy how fast time flies. As a quick refresher of the iPod Classic line, here was what the first generation model looked like released back in 2001, and the whole slogan was a thousand songs in your pocket. It really was the first iPod to be released. And then the second generation looked like this, a iterative update in terms of capacity. Third generation had some of the keys and icons up top, and then here is the fourth generation as we know it today, also called the iPod Photo because it was the first kind of iPod Classic that came with a color display. All the previous versions came with black and white monochrome screens. With that being said, the fourth generation iPod Classic still wasn't able to watch videos, and it came in capacities like 20 gigabytes and 40 gigabytes, starting at $299 for the 20 GB model, going all the way up to 400 bucks for the 40 GB model. Also gone was the older FireWire port for data syncing, and it was replaced with the more modern, at the time, Apple 30-pin connector. A closer look at the hardware first, the iPod Classic still is very beautiful, but it's a huge fingerprint magnet with the chrome finish on the rear, just like with many of the other iPods at the time. It almost acts as a mirror, and we can see that this is the 20 gigabyte model. Now in today's standards, the iPod fourth generation is also anything but slim, especially against something like an iPod Touch. We can just see how much uh, thinner modern devices have gotten, but uh, that's because it used a mechanical spinning hard drive as opposed to flash-based memory as we knew, know it today, which are silent and a lot faster to load back content. On the top, there's a hold switch to lock the front keys, and there's also a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have that ever familiar your scroll wheel which we can use to go back and forth between its interface very intuitively. So we basically have uh, one tab for music. You can sort it through different playlists, also by artists, albums, compilations, and by podcasts as well as genres. So if I tap on genres for instance we can see uh, all of them sorted depending on the tracks that you're listening to. So if I wanted to take a look at all, it's simply going to now sort them by artist, Adele, Alicia Keys, and go in A to Z order. If I tap on Adele, for instance, it's going to load back all the songs that I have on here for from Adele's 19 album, and then just begin playing it back. Overall speeds are still fine, but it's taking a split second to begin. As you can see there, it hasn't actually started the track. Uh, that's simply because it's thinking. It's loading back the content from the spinning hard drive. Occasional hangups like that definitely make us appreciate flash-based players and our phone's memories that we have today. And from a main menu, there's also extras, which include a very basic clock. However, the iPods rarely came with actual speakers, uh, unless you're talking about the iPod touch line. So uh, for things like playing back your music or having a really loud siren, you still needed to use the headphone jack and connect it to external speakers for that purpose. But you're also able to do things like a sleep timer and change the time and date. We're also able to see our basic contacts on here, so you can use uh, basically you know, iTunes on your computer to drag and drop files on here uh, to store people's uh, kind of contact information. This was back in the day where smartphones were definitely not commonplace, so the iPod was also trying to act as a very basic organizer to complement your kind of mobile needs. The last extra feature would be simple games. There is one called Brick, which is basically a brick breaker game that you use the scroll wheel to control, and uh, you have to try and kind of uh, hit all of the bricks. The ball will accelerate as it gets faster and faster if you hit it across one of the edges of your um, kind of platform, and you have three lives to try and uh, hit all these bricks and achieve the next level. The levels progress, there's more and more bricks which are further and further down from the screen, so you have to get through more and more of these layers before you get to the next level. The next game, Music Quiz, basically plays a 10 second snippet of a random song in your iPod's memory, and then you have to guess A, B, C, and D which song it was. And then Parachute is uh, something that gives you kind of a tank figure, and you have to kind of uh, shoot all of the helicopters as well as the figures which represent a kind of enemy army before they land uh, onto your land and if you don't do that in time that's when uh, you'll actually lose a life and eventually die. Finally the last included game was Solitaire and you're able to just play this classic card game again using the pretty sensitive scroll wheel to navigate around and select different cards and uh, play back the classic game. Other settings you can take a look at would be equalizers. You can also control the backlight timeout. Uh, so for EQ, you can see different settings like acoustic, bass booster, dance, hip hop, jazz, treble, vocal booster, so on and so forth. So that's been the iPod Classic fourth generation revisited. 
Here in 2019, it's crazy and kind of hard to imagine that anyone would want to carry around such a large device just for dedicated music listening when it's a feature that we have among the thousands of other applications on our smartphones. But back in 2004, something as simple as an MP3 player found incredible success, in large part due to Apple's industrial design that still makes it look quite beautiful all these years later. It was definitely a simpler time, and it's astounding to think how far we've come over the past decade or so in terms of advancements to the features and the power of our mobile devices that we have in our pockets today.